do you know that plants synthesize food for themselves? When the plants synthesize food from themselves, they use an organelle. That is known as chloroplast. What are chloroplast and what are plastids? Today we will know. But first, let's start from the beginning. Long, long ago, billions and gazillions years ago, there was an algae, prochloran like algae. What is prochloran? Prochloran is an algae which belongs to prokaryotes. It's a BGA, blue green algae. And these were the first oxygen producers on the planet. These were the first. They increased the oxygen level from, from 1 to 21 percent. These are organisms were engulfed by a eukaryotic cells, by another cell. And that was the beginning of the plastic. That was the beginning of the chloro. What is the proof of this? Why scientists say that it is a symbiotic relationship between a prokaryote and a eukaryote that is semi-autonomous? The proof is that still in the world there is present a chloroplast which is known as muroplast. The interesting thing in it that it contain murine, the cell wall of the cyanobacteria and gram-negative bacteria is known as murine. So there is an outer membrane which is eukaryotic in nature. Outer membrane is eukaryotic in nature and inner membrane is prokaryotic in nature. That was the first plastid. These are membrane bounded organelles concerned with the synthesis of glucose, concerned with photosynthesis, and as a byproduct, they produce oxygen, which we inhale. So, <clears throat> the first chloroplast after the first chloroplast when it is an embryonic form it is known as the proplastid the proplastid is the embryonic form of plastid when it is grown into the dark like inside a seed or when it is not a fully chloroplast it is known as etioplast And when the plant dies, we can confirm that, that their chloroplast will become gerontoplast. Gerontoplast is a decaying chloroplast. It may be a tenosome as well, which we will discuss later on. But first come to the types of chloroplast. So when we come to the types of plastids, when we come to the types of plastids, there are three types of plastids mentioned in our course. The first type is leucoplast. What is a leucoplast? So there are the types of chloroplast. These types are leucoplast. Leucoplasts are colorless chloroplast. These are storing chloroplasts. These are storing chloroplasts. 
store food for their plants. They store starch in the form of amyloplasts. For example, in potato, they store starch. There may be proteinoblasts. which store proteins or there may be ileoblasts which store oils so the leucoplasts are the colorless plastids which store which store food for them these are also known as lamellated chloroplasts Dear students, what is lamellated and what is granulated chloroplast? On the basis of morphology, a type of chloroplast which contain only lamellate is known as lamellated chloroplast. And the type of chloroplast or plastid which contain grana that is known as granulated chloroplast. So, on the basis of morphology, they may be different. On the basis of function, they may be different. On the basis of origin, all types of chloroplasts arise from the proplastids. If they are present other than green, if they contain a color, if they possess a color and that is other than green, that is known as chromoplast which give color to the petals, to the fruits, to the autumn leaves. Now, the second type is chromoplast. Chromoplast are the plastics which, give, which are other than green in color. These are other than green in color. Now, they may be red in color, so they may be rhodoplasts. They may be brown in color, so they are known as pheoplasts. And what they do? They give color to the autumn leaves, to the petals, the beautiful petals when you see the red petals and all that which give color to the flowers, most of them are chromoplasts and the fruits which give the beautiful and uh, they seem delicious when we see them. That is because of the Chromoplast. So fruit color is given to them. They may come as an MCQ as well. The third type is known as chloroplast. Chloroplast is the most important one. And we will discuss the structure of it as well. Now here we come to the chloroplast. Is the word indicates chlorus. Chlorus means green. Plasts are green. Chloroplast is present in all eukaryotic cells, which are which belong to the plants. In all eukaryotic cells, which belong to means all plant cells. Possess chloroplast, while elements are without chloroplast. So they are green in color. If we look into the shape, first shape, let's see the shape. <clears throat> the shape varies and it is most diverse. For example, in an algae, Magusia, there may be present a star shape. 
which are known as chelate in shape. In one elegy, it is maybe a spring-like, which is ribbon-like, spring-like, gyral, or spring-like. That's why the elegy is known as spirogyra. Spiral and gyral. That's why it is known as zygnema. In some energy, that's maybe a garden like. Some even contain disc shape, some reticulate. So, shape varies with the plants. In general terms, when we make a saucer shape, that belongs to the dica, that belongs to the higher. If we look into the structure of the chloroplast, <clears throat> now if we look into the structure of chloroplast, that structure it is a semi-autonomous organism. Semi-autonomous means it is self replicate but cannot replicate outside the cell why it is self replicating because it was a cyanobacteria once it lived as a symbiote in a symbiotic relationship there is a theory which is known as endosymbiotic theory it contains its own DNA, which is circular, like the prokaryotes. It contains its own ribosomes. It has an outer membrane, which is eukaryotic like. It has an inner membrane which is prokaryotic and there is a matrix filled space, fluid filled space which is known as fluid filled matrix which is also known as Stroma. What is stroma? Stroma is the ground. Vast ground. Like the colony in which the buildings, huge buildings like Burj Khalifa are standing. These buildings are known as Karnas. And they have factories, units, Chlorophylls and these factories are interconnected by some ways, some channels. These are known as intergrana. So that field is known as the stroma. It is filled with enzymes. The most important enzyme, the most abundant protein on planet Earth is Rubisco. That is Rubisco. It is present in the strong starch renews. My cell, starch renews. My cell is also present. Some oil droplets are present. So starch may be there. Some oils may be there. And there are grain. That whole structure that whole structure is known as grana. Plural grana. That one part is known as thylakoid. And inside the thylakoid, that is a membrane, a coin like structure, a rounded structure. And that place is known as lumen. 
and a port photosystems are present on the thylakoid membrane. The photosystem 1 is outside, the photosystem 2 is inside of the thylakoid membrane. And proteins are stored, pro sorry, protons are stored which will later on synthesize, which will later on synthesize the ATP in the light reaction. So light reaction occurs inside this building, inside this crena, inside this thylakoid. And photosystems are present for them. NADPH and ATP is formed inside this. The two grena are interconnected by intergrena. <clears throat> there are numbers of thylakoids present in a grena and uh, it may be uh, 50 to 100 thylakoids may be present in a grena. So that grena do the light reaction. The stroma, inside the stroma, the dark reaction, the Kelvin cycle occurs. The dark reaction, the Kelvin cycle occurs. The glucose, the P gale is synthesized. So there are four parts, dear students, four parts of a chloroplast. Outer membrane, inner membrane, stroma, granum. And inside the stroma, dark reaction takes place. And inside the grana, thylakoids, intergrana are present. The thylakoid is concerned, the granum is concerned with photosynthesis. That is uh, off for now, inshallah. Later on, we will discuss that in very detail. Thank you.